got some other things going on. Uh, I just got a, a message, or I saw a message from Danielle that uh, her cousin just, or they, she, I guess they just found out that he's been diagnosed with cancer. And if, if you don't know who you are in Christ and you get that report, it knocks you for a loop. If you know who you are, you stand up and you start pushing back against that report. But part of what I'm going to talk about today is what's going on in the world today. If you read the news or you live under a house somewhere and you don't realize it, people are falling over and dying all over the place who are healthy and strong and they're dropping dead from heart attacks. You know what the the one thing is that they all had in common? They had gotten the jab. We are coming into a season where we're going to realize that there has been so much horrific evil done to us as people by other people that it's going to shake some of your hearts. But right now, I want to encourage you that there is no fear for those who are in Christ. So we're going to make some declarations. If you've taken a jab or the booster or whatever because of work or because you thought it was good or you're afraid, we're going to address it right now. And you need to add, you need to grab your faith. You need to take your mustard seed of faith and say, I agree with what Pastor Larry is saying right now. So first off, I lift up Danielle's cousin, John. John, I speak over you now in the name of Jesus. I curse the plans of the enemy to bring sickness into your body. I renounce it. I curse every demonic entity that has brought that cancer into your body, that inflammation into your body, those ungodly cells into your body, and I command them to leave now. I release healing into your body, and I speak healing into every part of your body that has been touched by the lie of the enemy. Anybody who has had a jab, we curse that plan of the enemy. We curse any of that ungodly substance that was put into our body that is trying to clog arteries and cause death. We come against it right now. We command it to shrivel up and die. I speak to anybody who has had the jab that that substance that was put into your body dissolves right now and dissipates and leaves your body in the natural way with no damage and that your body is totally restored. Now we're going to say amen and we're going to agree with God as I blow the shofar. The shofar was a declaration of let it be true, Lord. So right now, if you've taken that, you declare that you are healed and free of all its byproducts now in Jesus' name.
You know, one of the, the main attacks of the enemy is hopelessness. And he gets us looking at the natural realm. And in the natural realm, can you fix any of your problems? Probably not. Or you've tried and they keep coming back like a, a bad smell. You know, if your garbage can is full of rotten food, nothing's going to make that trash can smell good until you empty it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know why I said that, but it just sounded good. <laughs> I have to purpose to embrace and go after my identity in Christ. I cannot be wishy-washy. I cannot be, well, I don't know. I have to grab it because it's the anchor for my soul. It is the anchor for my life. It is the anchor that's going to keep me from being blown away by the storm. Thank you, Jesus. So, how do I battle hopelessness? Well, you're probably battling some demonic. Oh, Larry, Christians can't have demons on them. Hey, that's a lie from the enemy. How many lies were you told or mistruths were you told growing up in church? A lot. You know, God put that sickness on you, Mario, to teach you a lesson. That's from the pit of hell. <laughs> You're all alone. Nobody loves you. Pit of hell. It's never going to get better. This is your destiny. This is your cross to bear. What a load of... Lies. <laughs> when it says, pick up your cross and follow me, he was telling the apostles, pick up you being on the cross and that's your new identity and follow me. Follow me with your new identity as I've been crucified with Christ. Not the cross being some burden that you have to carry. Do you realize how much nonsense we've been taught? We have the Ten Commandments up on the wall. Paul says... The ministry written in stone is the ministry of death. So we have the death ministry on a wall of our church. And we encourage you to read it and memorize it. Paul says the law came to stir up sin. The law came to show me that I can't be righteous in myself. And we teach that. And then you want to step back and say, are you insane? No. The God of this world, a.k.a. whatever, fallen monkey man, because I give him absolutely no honor. Jesus. No honor. Has deceived the world. It says that he has blinded you to the truth of the gospel. The gospel is your new identity in Christ. The whole concept of the mixed message, the lukewarm church, is Satan's work. Thinking that God is judging you is Satan's work. So hopelessness is a lie from the enemy. Larry, but you don't know what I've gone through. No, I don't. But I know what I've gone through. When you realize you're a crack addict, and you've been doing it for 10 years, that's a very sobering moment. Mm -hmm. Especially when you were born in the church, raised in the church, were saved at 12 years old, knew you were called to ministry, prayed in tongues at 12, mm -hmm. and now you're out sucking on a pipe over in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Man, I just wanted to die. Mm -hmm. Eat my Rocky Road ice cream, smoke my dope, and, you know... Maybe they, maybe I might slip into heaven if Peter lets me through the front gate. See, I had no concept of Christianity. I had no concept of who I am. 
So how did I get out of that? Well, I had to change my life. Well, how do you do that? I made a simple declaration. I said, Lord, I give up doing it my way. Now, did everything change immediately? No. But did I change going down a road into death and destruction and start going up to a road of life? Yes. Immediately, I got back in church. Any church was better than no church at that time. Within 30, 35 days, the drug habit was gone. I had reunited myself with the family. They were going to church with me. I got plugged in, and I started reading the word like a hungry wolverine. And I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And immediately I saw some things. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed everyone. Wow, he healed everyone. You know, he didn't get mad at anybody except the Pharisees. I read the story, the lady caught in adultery. I said, wait, 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 wait. They caught her. They caught her doing the nasty with somebody that wasn't her husband. And what did he say to her? And we take that as she stopped sinning. No, 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 you've been lied to. The word sin is a word used in archery. If I shoot at a target and I miss the mark, that's sin, and that is the second translation for that word. What was the number one translation? I have no part of or I have no inheritance. When did I become separated from God? What sin did I commit as a child to separate me from God? I was born. Adam sinned. Adam separated me from God. Jesus' ministry was the ministry of reconciliation. reconciliation, not spank you and tell you how bad you are. He said, I'm reconciling you back to the Father. You can't do it. I'm going to do it for you. Witchcraft is you trying to accomplish something in your flesh. Let me say that again. Witchcraft is you trying to accomplish something in your flesh. So we go to church every morning and they say, are you hot or cold today? And I always say, well, where the heck is it? I almost said hell. I, I go, where's the thermometer? How do I know? How, who's telling me? Where's the guidelines for being hot and cold? Guess what? It ain't in the Bible. That's a whole teaching that is full of caca. Paul says, one thing I know, and that's Jesus and him crucified. Why? Because if I know Jesus and him crucified, I know I was crucified with Christ. I'm now a new creation. Old things have passed away. The enemy, if he's attacking you, is attacking you in your old nature, your old past, the old you. Because he can't attack you in the new person because the new person is... Perfect. Yeah, but Larry, what, what if I... You don't know, I, I, I went out and did something really bad last night. Okay. So being condemned, ask, why did you do that? Do you have a demonic stronghold? Do you not understand? Are you just allowing your flesh to rule in your life? David was up on his roof sunbathing with his binoculars looking at the chick on the next house who was taking a bath who happened to be somebody else's wife and he said, hey, you guys go over and tell that lady to come to my house. He was married to somebody else. He got her pregnant. Then her husband comes back from the war. And David encouraged her to go home, be with your wife. And he says, no, I will not go be with my wife because my men are still fighting. I will sleep on the doorstep. 
because David was trying to have his, you know, him hook up with his wife so they could say the baby would be his. Now this is David. <laughs> then David said to his commanders, hey, hey, we're going to send, what's his name, back to the war front. I want you to take him out into the battle and then leave him. And, and leave him there so he is killed. Mm -hmm. This is David. Mm -hmm. And God looks at David and says, this is a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. Did God judge David by his actions? No. Paul says, I judge no man according to the flesh. If I look at you and I judge you because how you dress, how you look, if you're chubby, if you're skinny, if, you, if you're doing something that we know is not good, I am judging you wrong. Mario, man of God. Brother, man of God. Sister, man of God. Or woman of God. Gigi, woman, daughter of God. See, that's my judgment. I don't judge you by what you're still coming out of or learning to conquer. That's the enemy. The enemy always brings up what you don't have a handle on. So how do you get out of this place of hopelessness? Lord, I, I'm going to learn how you do it. I'm going to learn what you say about me. I'm going to learn what the Bible truly says about a Christian. Yeah, Larry, but we just need to confess all our sins. Okay? How does that work for you? Well, I spend most of the day confessing. Huh. What are you meditating all day long when you're confessing sins? Yourself. You! You already know you can't fix it. So then either I'm missing something or John 191, 1 John 1 9 does not mean what we've been taught. John says, he goes, little children. That doesn't mean they're part of the kingdom. It means they're young people because John is like, 80, 90 years old. He's called the elder. He said, brother, if you want to have a relationship with me, and the word he uses is the word for intimacy between a husband and wife, how can I ever have that with somebody other than my wife? Spiritual. When I'm born again, do I become one spirit with God? Because the spirit of God, Jesus, is in me, right? What spirit's in you? Oh, it's Jesus' spirit. Oh, we all have the same spirit. And I now become the body of Christ. We're one body. He's talking to unsaved people, so he says, we have a high priest that if we confess we're separated, and the word there they say sin is a noun, all the times that John says about sin is a noun. If we confess we're separated, he will forgive us and make us one. That is a salvation scripture, not a stupid... For you to be... Oh, God. I, I got to really... Mm, mm, mm. Good news. The good news. It's the good news is I'm in. Mm. I'm in. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit. Mm. God says nothing can Jesus says nothing can take you from my hand. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to get past salvation. We'll never go into victory if I'm still worried about if I'm in or not. Amen. If God likes me, if He's mad at me. Mm. If I'm in that place, I am in the playground of the devil. If I'm in a mixed message, you know the law is the playground of the devil? Mm -hmm. Did you do everything perfect today, brother? <coughs> Were you on fire? Were you really hot? Did you give sacrificially, my friend? Did you pray in tongues all night long? <coughs> that is the crud we've heard from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Wherever you're at in your life, whatever your challenge is, God can redeem you, pull you out, restore, re-energize, and turn your life around. But it takes you, your part is to say, Lord, I'm going to change how I think. 
Amen. I'm going to change my understanding of you. I'm going to change my understanding of who I am in Christ. I am not going to allow the enemy to beat the bejeebies out of me every single day. No. Does the enemy ever say anything good about you? No. Loser. You suck. You're never going to make it. Oh, what? You know, you know, it's in your dead. God doesn't even like you. When you hear that kind of stuff, you are listening to a disembodied demon. You need to get the monkey off of you. If you're tormented by fear, you need to get the monkey off of you. If you're in a state of confusion all the time, you need to get the monkey off of you. If you spend all your time thinking about what if, you need to get that demonic stronghold off of you. Okay, that was all free. Today's message. It's a bad day to be an Egyptian. What in the world are you talking about, Larry? I want you to listen and not miss anything today. We are coming into some of the darkest days the earth has ever seen. <clears throat> Slash. We're coming into some of the greatest and brightest days the earth has ever seen. If you're in Egypt, it's going to be bad. If you're in Gosha, it's going to be good. And I'll explain that. Crystal, could you catch the back door for me, please? So... I don't. I want you guys to prepare yourselves because you are going to see more and more and more and more horrific reports in the news. And so, God is using Egypt and a Red Sea moment to tell us what He's doing. So I'm going to I'm going to go back and I'm going to unpack a little bit about the Exodus. But we need to run that through the cross and apply it to us. Okay? So a bad day to be an Egyptian. Do I mean the Egyptians were bad like today? or No. But the Egyptians back in the day were devil worshippers and they were persecuting the children of Israel. In Exodus 3.7... I mean, let me do a little history here. Between Abraham and Moses is about... No, between Abraham and Joseph is about 250 years. So God comes to Abraham and says, Hey, Abraham, dude, I want to have a relationship with you. And uh, I want you to leave your family, your, your, your old way of life, all your old beliefs, and come with me and I'm going to take you over here. And Abraham goes, okay. And because he trusted God, God said, I am gifting you with the gift of righteousness. So Abraham, a man out of time, he was not after the cross, but God credited him with righteousness because he was really good. He confessed the sins, he kept the law. Oh, the law hadn't even come yet. So God, when God made relationship back with man after Adam, he did it based on, do you trust me? Mm -hmm. That was the only qualifier for Abraham to have a relationship with God is, do you trust me? Now when you trust God, you will be led by his unctions and you will do the things he wants you to do. It was never about Abraham being good. He gave his wife up twice to kings. I think that would pretty much end my life. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Heather, we're going to meet King Joe. And I, I said you can be in part of the harem. Uh, are you okay with that? That'd probably be the last time I see her because she would shoot me or stab me or shank me or, you know, and throw me off a cliff. God never rebuked Abraham for that, but God protected Sarah. From those kings. So Abraham with the relationship was all based on do you trust me and will you let me lead you? 
Isn't that pretty exciting? Yes. Okay, so now Abraham is blessed by God. Abraham has goats and sheep and people. He's bigger than most cities. <clears throat> and then he has a son, the son of promise, Isaac. Isaac is blessed. Isaac then has Jacob, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. So between Abraham having a relationship, starting a relationship with God, and Joseph coming into Egypt is 215 years. Joseph, I believe, would have known Abraham. He definitely would have known Isaac. So they would have had an oral history of what God did. Okay? So Joseph comes into Egypt, and God uses him to save who? Egypt. God saved Egypt from the famine. He used Joseph. So then we move forward in time and there came a Pharaoh who did not remember Joseph. And he was afraid of the Israelites because they kept growing and they were prospering. They were going and they were prospering. The original Pharaoh gave Joseph's brothers and dad the land of Gosha. Mm -hmm. If you were looking at Egypt, Gosha is over here to the right, kind of pops up against the, this area over here. It's kind of a valley. Mm -hmm. And that's where the children of Israel lived. Mm -hmm. So now when we go to when Moses was born, that Pharaoh was afraid, and he changes his attitude towards the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And they put him in bondage, they put him in slavery, and they start persecuting them. Now, these are all typologies of us on the earth. We were supposed to be favored on the earth. We were supposed to be running the earth. We were supposed to be blessed on the earth. Yes. And now we're in slavery to insane governors, insane mayors, city councils, uh, health departments, a lunatic in the White House. I'm sorry, we're not supposed to talk about politics, but we have a man who has dementia. Hey, there's a balloon from a foreign country. Ain't that pretty? I'm going to blow it up after it gets out and passes all across the United States. <laughs> there is such insanity going on, the news doesn't tell you about it. Well, they found secret documents in Trump's house. We're going to throw them in jail. Biden has 42 cases of classified documents in his garage with his Mustang or Corvette or whatever the heck that car is. <laughs> It was a locked garage. There is see, we're, we're not seeing how insane it is. Okay? So let's go back. So now, the Lord says, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and heard their outcry because of their taskmasters. The taskmasters for us is the enemy and all the people who have sided with the enemy and put us under bondage. For I am aware of their suffering, so I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians, a.k.a. Satan, for us. And to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and all those guys. So God has always wanted us to be in a land where we were blessed. Oh, Larry, we're just supposed to be dirt poor and humble. Lie from the enemy. How was Abraham? Rich. He was, and we would look at him and we'd go, he's filthy rich. But see, Abraham's wealth came because he trusted God. We see that when Abraham has interaction with the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and Melchizedek. King of Sodom says, Abraham, I'm going to give you all this stuff. Abraham says, I'm not even going to take a shoelace from you. At least you say you made Abraham rich. 
And then he turned around and gave a tithe to Melchizedek. You have to understand, yes, I have a job. Yes, I live in the world. But God is my source. God is the one who caused me to be blessed. Amen. And because I'm blessed, I then give, I, then, I support. I do everything because I already am blessed because I put faith in God. When I stopped trying to build my business and make it good and work really hard and started trusting God and letting Him tell me what to do, my business did a U-turn, started going back up. When you see your business grow for three years and then just turn into a rock for 10 years, and every year they, we got the end of the year, go, how do we do? Oh, we're off by another $30,000. And you're doing everything. But I just say, you are doing everything. And when I started speaking over my business, Lord, we are blessed. We have the favor of God. What do you want me to do? We ended up closing down an office in Rialto, an office in Beaumont. We centralized one office. We, we did a website so all the kids do the website. They don't need to come to our building anymore. Cut my overhead in half. And we hit bottom, we started going back up. Now we have, well, besides the pandemic, we've had years of going back up, going back up, going back. We're not back up all the way yet, but we're going upward. Why? What changed? What I believe, what I think, and what comes out of my pie hole. Heather, it was a really horrible day. You know, they did this, they did it, and I used to come home and vomit on her. All the bad stuff. I don't do that anymore. Or very poquito. I said, you know, God really blessed us today. And you know what? If a dollar comes in, I'm just as excited if a thousand dollars come in. Because I'm trusting God and not my bank account. Amen? Amen. So God says, I am going to deliver my people from the hands of the Egyptians. In Exodus 7, we now have Moses on the scene. God has raised Moses up. He's brought him back to Egypt. And he's now going to use Moses to free his people. You, you, want, you want some gummy bears? You want a stick? Now listen to this, and how do we apply this to us? The Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. How do we translate that through the cross? Pharaoh represents the evil one. Pharaoh represents the Babylon system. Pharaoh represents Satan and all his hordes, right? God says, Moses, I have made you like God, little g. Who am I the body of? Whose spirit dwells inside of me? Who's Jesus? Think about that, what you just said. The spirit of God dwells in me. I'm the body of the living God. So then when I read a scripture where Jesus says in Revelation, the Father shares his throne with me, but Jesus, the man God, he's fully man, but he's fully God. He says, the Father shares his throne with me, and I share my throne with you. Another place it says, as Jesus is today, so am I. Okay, now, put the seatbelts on your brain for a second. Where are you seated at? I'm seated on the throne of God. Because I am the body of Christ, I am now in the Godhead. And I'm still thinking like a earth man. Instead of a child of the most high. You guys you guys really haven't wrapped your head around that yet. Jesus is in the Father. Remember when Jesus said to the Father? I want them to be with me like I am with you. And he says, me and the Father are one. Jesus says, I want them to be one with me. So we're hidden 
in Christ on the throne of God and we're worried about the electric bill. Mm. We're worried about the monkey that says you're a loser and it's never going to get better. See, we don't know who we are. I used to, you know, the thought came in, eat a cookie, watch something bad, go buy another Hawaiian shirt. Okay. Mm. When I started realizing who I was and we kicked the monkeys out, I go, no, I, I don't eat a cookie. I don't like Hawaiian shirts too much anymore. <laughs> and I don't watch that anymore. Mm -hmm. See, I now have authority. I'm learning to walk in my authority. Mm -hmm. The authority I have through Christ and my identity in Christ. If I'm trying to do it in me, I'm destined to fail. If I'm trying to do it in Larry, I'm going to try really hard. We went to a church, bless their heart. You do everything you can. You do everything you can. And when you come to the end of you, God will come in and finish the task. <laughs> That's scary. That is crap. Can I say crap? I'm going to say crap today. I immediately turn to God. And let him take care of it. Now, he'll give me instructions, but I'm not going to try to do all I can. Because that, when do I know I've done enough? Well, you know, God's not moving. Maybe I haven't done enough. You see where you go to that trap? Where there's always a little wiggle worm where you haven't quite done enough? I'm led by the Spirit. If the Lord says, sit down, I've got it, I sit down. If he says, get up and run, I need you to run right now, I get up and run. Mm -hmm. If he says, we're going to blow the show far today, we're going to, we're, you know, you just saw Danielle's uh, cousin, John, we're going to pray for him right now. Mm -hmm. I, get a, I get a text message on our webpage last night at 11 o'clock. You know, I, I, I need prayer, okay? I said, Heather, hang on, turn the TV off, and I sent her a voice text, and I prayed for him. If the Lord said, ignore it and do it tomorrow, I'd have done it tomorrow. I want to be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I looked at you today when you came in. You who are hiding from me. You. Look at you. And I said, I spoke over her last week. I don't remember a word that I said. Because, you know, it wasn't me. I have no clue what I said to you. But I remember speaking over her twice. Now, I remember what every prophet has spoken over me. <laughs> I've written them down. I keep them. I meditate on them bad boys. See, that's me doing it through the spirit instead of my flesh. Mm -hmm. If I look, oh, Mario needs an encouraging word today. Okay, my, Brother Mario, God really likes you and his favor is on you today. That's out of me. Mm -hmm. Now, those might be encouraging words and they might be true, but they're out of my flesh. Mm -hmm. Because my spirit did not say, go talk to Mario yet. Now I might. Amen? Amen. Wow. We need to get going. So I have made you as God to Pharaoh. I am like God to Satan. When I speak, I speak as Jesus Christ over the works of the enemy. Larry, that's heresy. No, it's not. Jesus said to the apostle, that's just the apostle. No, 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 no. He said to the 120, the things that I do, you'll do greater. As for you, you shall speak all that I command you. Everything Moses did was what God told him to do. And your brother Aaron will speak to Pharaoh that he let the sons of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that I may multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh does not listen to you, I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring out my army, my people, the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt by great judgments. Who is he judging? In this story, the Egyptians are a metaphor for the enemy. In John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What does John 17 and 18 say? We don't read that. 
Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world. For the world is already judged, and this is the judgment. They either believe in me or they don't believe in me. So as far as us being separated from God or going to hell, it's only for one thing, that I believe in Jesus or not believe in Jesus. That's it. It's not, I smoked and drank and went out with those who did. That's a lie. And Peter's not standing at the front gate because we're not going through the front gate. We're going right through the throne room. And it's not based on Peter. It's based on Jesus. When we show up, Jesus goes, oh yeah, that's one of mine, Father. He goes, oh, okay, come on in. So this is a, the whole story of the Egyptians right now is what I'm talking about today. How we're going to deal with things. So God is bringing judgment against the enemy and the people who have sold their souls to the enemy. You know, people have sold their souls. You know, people have sacrificed their children. There are people in, in places of authority, especially like in entertainment, who will get up and make signs and do stuff. Those are all demonic signs, and that's them declaring who they worship and where they get their power from. Hey. Only got 27 scriptures to go. <laughs> I will deliver you with great judgment. Verse 5. Now he's going to tell you why I'm going to do that. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I extend my hand over Egypt and bring the sons out of Israel from their midst. So Moses and Aaron did this as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. You know, Larry, I'm, I'm at retirement age. I, I, I don't know if God has anything for me. I'm 65 and I'm just starting. Amen. Come on. I am just putting the tennis shoes on to go out jogging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moses started at 80. Mm -hmm. And he lived to how long? 120. How many of you tell the Lord and, and speak to the Lord, I'm going to go 120? Mm -hmm. Or how many of you have a thought, I just want to get out of here? Mm -hmm. You get to heaven, the Lord goes, hey, you made it. You didn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. Here's your crown, a little piece of gold with one little rock in it. <laughs> Larry, God's not like, yeah, he says there will be more rewards in heaven for what you do on the earth. So there's my salvation. I'll have a crown of salvation. I'll have the robe of righteousness. I mean, the robe, garment of salvation, the robe of righteousness. I'll have a crown. But when I do everything God wants me to do on the earth and I don't get beat up by the enemy, my crown and my reward in heaven will be bigger. The man who took the talents and used them, what did God say to the man who used the talents? Gave him more. And he said, I'm going to put you in charge of ten cities. Where did that come from? What did you find out when you rule and reign with Christ in the, in the age to come that you're in charge of a planet? And those who escape, they get the little hobble village down by the, the dump. <laughs> That's what you're going to be in charge of. I don't do it to get a reward, but I do in the back of my head realize there is a reward for me being obedient and doing what God wants me to do. We've been spending all our time trying to be righteous instead of pushing back the kingdom of darkness. <clears throat> There's going to be a lot of comments today, I can tell. <laughs> Facebook is blowing up. Verse 7, uh, no, chapter 7, verse 14 and 19. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refused to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning just as he's going out to the water. Position yourself to meet him on the bank of the Nile. And you shall take in your hand the staff. That represents his power. That was turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to say... Let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. But behold, you have not listened up to now. Verse 17. This is what the Lord says. By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I'm going to strike the water that is in the Nile with the staff that's in my hand. And it will be turned into <coughs> blood. Why is that significant? 
All the ten plagues can be tied to different gods of the Egyptians. <clears throat> Who is delivering the children of Israel? Moses. God's using Moses, right? So God's doing it, but he's using Moses. Eighty years earlier, what happened to Moses? Pharaoh said, we need to start killing these Hebrews. <clears throat> So he told the midwives to send all the male babies of the Hebrews to the river. Mm -hmm. And they would throw them in the river and the crocodiles would eat them. Mm -hmm. And Moses was saved by his mother. She was hidden. And then when he was three months old, she put him in the little raft and sent him over. And Pharaoh's daughter mm -hmm. took Moses out and raised him in Pharaoh's house. Mm -hmm. So the river turned red for all the blood that Pharaoh had shed, and it was babies. Mm -hmm. What did they do in abortion clinics? Now, if you've had an abortion, I'm not judging you. God has wiped that out. But in reality, you are sacrificing a child to Baal. Unknowingly. So the Church of Satan has opened their first clinic, an abortion clinic, where you can go right in and do a ritual and offer your baby to Satan. It's happening in America. And you're going, how can this be? Well, we've let them in. The church has sat back behind the walls and made everybody feel guilty. We haven't been doing what we're supposed to do. Now we're going to turn it around. So... Yes, there will be great darkness, but there's going to be the greatest outpouring of God's power on the earth in a good way that we've ever seen, and we can all be partakers. Amen. So the blood was because 80 years earlier, Pharaoh had killed how many babies we don't even know. Mm -hmm. Exodus 8, then the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water and say to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go, that they may serve me. For I, if, if you are not going to let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and on your servants and on your people. Into your houses, into the houses of the Egyptians will be full of the swarms of flies. And also the ground on which they live. We're going to get through this. I'm going to go back and explain the plagues. Plagues. So this was flies, but this is what he says. Look at what he says in the next verse. Verse 22. On that day I will set apart the land of where my people are living so that no swarms of flies will be there. In order that you may know that I, the Lord, am in the midst of the land, I will put a division between my people and your people. So the great judgment that's coming on the earth is not going to touch the church. It's going to touch those who are unsaved, those who have put their hope in the Babylon system, <coughs> those who have sold out to the darkness. So don't let fear come on you. You know, we're not all going to starve. The grocery stores are not going to shut down and have no food. You will be taken care of. If God has to magically, not magically, supernaturally cause food to show up in your in your pantry or gas in your car or money in your bank, he'll do it. I don't believe he's going to do it that way, but he can. Did he cause bread to fall out of the sky? Yes. And when they griped about that, he called he caused quail to come running up on shore and say, kill me, kill me, eat me. All these little quail. And they ate quail till they were sick. Now you go to the store and you try to buy a quail and it's like $100 a pound. But God may fall out of the sky. See, God can do anything because He is. We need to start thinking of Him as instead of as the rebuker or the God of the law. <clears throat> he created everything. Ooh, we made some nice chairs. Yeah, but who made the material for the chair? Oh, God did. When they made those steel legs, how'd they go find the steel? God made it. He hid in the ground. Someone taught him how to take cotton and turn it into fabric. Who made the cotton? Oh, God. 
So man is giving things that he can do, but the material and the substance all came from God, right? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Tomorrow this sign will occur that the Lord did so in a six, uh, thick swarm of flies near the house of the pharaohs and the house of servants of the land which was laid waste by the swarm of flies in all the land of Egypt. So when the plagues came, they did not come on the land of Goshen. So there's ten plagues, <clears throat> and we're going to see plagues like this come on the enemy. They, they won't be, they're not going to be flies and frogs and stuff, but they're going to come and they're going to destroy companies. Do you realize how much the news companies, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, dear God, have hidden from you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think those companies will survive? How about the ones who said we're going to put something in you that kills you and tell you that it's good for you and it'll protect you? Do you think those people are going to be punished? Yes. Yeah. But will you be punished? No. So it's going to come against those who have done the despicable things. But now on the flip side, we're going to see the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit. There's going to be anointings poured out at the same time that this happens. That there's not going to be one person up here preaching and laying hands. There'll be people all over the place laying hands, raising people from the dead, healing miracles, restoration miracles, creative miracles. It's like Jesus time 100,000. I mean, it's going to be everywhere. I knew 10 years ago this was coming. I didn't understand it completely, but I've been listening to other prophets who have been all of a sudden talking about it. A prophet I really uh, respect, two or three weeks ago said, the Lord says it's going to be the upper room, right? But it's going to be an upper room that is everywhere and anywhere. In other words, it's not going to be one location where the anointing comes out. It's going to be all over the planet. Amen. <laughs> It's not necessarily going to be the mega church. Because if they're not teaching the gospel, it's right. not going to fall. That's right. It's going to fall on the little churches who are saying, you know what, you can be part of the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are no longer a filthy sinner. Yes, God loves you. Yes, you're sealed by the, the Holy Spirit. You cannot lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. You're in. Now start doing God's will. Amen. We need to get past, am I good enough? So I can start doing. Now, will in that process, will I start losing bad habits, bad thinking, bad beliefs? Absolutely. Yeah. But you're going to do it as a righteous person, not a person trying to be righteous. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So all the ten plagues can be tied to <coughs> Egyptian gods. Mm. I'm not going to go all into all of it. When the Nile turned the blood, the blood was in the river for seven days. And then God restored the river. The next thing that came was frogs. There's an Egyptian god. It's a female with a frog head. And she represents wisdom and uh, fertility. God caused frogs to show up in Egypt and be everywhere. In their house, in their food, in their granaries, in their ovens. And then the next day he... You know, Pharaoh said, I give up, and God caused all the frogs to die. Mm -hmm. And it says they piled them up in great heaps of piles. Mm -hmm. Now, all Egypt stunk because of the Nile, because all the fish died. Mm -hmm. Then when all the frogs died, there's big piles of dead frogs. Mm -hmm. There was a stench of death. They all represented mm -hmm. gods. And they all represented Egyptian gods. Then there were going to be gnats or lice that come on the people and the animals. And almost at the same time, the flies came on the people and the animals. Then a plague came on the cattle and killed all the cattle. Oh, yeah. And then boils came on the people and the animals. And that word boil actually in Hebrew means leprosy. Mm -hmm. And then hail came down, not of ice, but of fire and stones. And it knocked down all the trees and all the plants. <clears throat> and then there was a plague of locusts that ate everything that was still standing. Mm -hmm. 
And then darkness came on Egypt for three days, which represented the tomb and the yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, every firstborn in Egypt died. Mm. Except the people in Goshen. Mm -hmm. And that's when Pharaoh said, get out of here. Mm -hmm. And remember when they left? They took all their animals. Because Moses said, I'm not going to leave a hoof in Egypt. That's right. mm -hmm. So God totally destroyed Egypt, which is a metaphor for what God is going to do to the demonic stronghold in the world. Amen. He is going to destroy it so there is literally nothing left. Yes. Yes. I'm already planning for another building. <laughs> this will this will fill up the first day or two. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. The anointing that you've seen is like 1% of what's going to happen. That's right. Mm -hmm. How about you walk in the door and the demons leave you at the back door? Amen. Because the anointing is so strong. Amen. Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. How about you don't even have to come up for healing? Mm -hmm. You just come in the room and you're healed. Glory. Because you believe. Mm -hmm. It's going to be miraculous. And on the other side, it's going to be, oh, dear God, mm. you're going to find out that man has done some things that are despicable, the mm. child trafficking, the government, the things the government has done, the food supply, the medical supply, mm. our banking system. Mm. <clears throat> Do any of you know what the Federal Reserve Bank is? I never understood it. But this is what the Federal Reserve Bank is. Bank of America comes to the Federal Reserve and says, we want to borrow a billion dollars. And the federal government says, okay, we're at uh, 2%. Yeah. We're going to loan you a billion dollars. He then turns around, Bank of America, and loans money for cars at 6 to 18 to 19 to 20%. So Bank of America has taken our tax dollars yep. at 2%, it to us. charging us 15 or 20% to use our money to buy goods. Mm -hmm. right. When you pay off your house, you will pay for it three times. Right. When you buy a car on a six-year loan and pay for it, you will pay for it twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if you only had to pay for it one time right. plus 2 or 3%? Cash. Or you pay cash for it. Do you not see that there's all these entities that are like little vacuum cleaners in your wallet going suck, 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 suck. suck. And they're taking all your money and all your provision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this is all the bad stuff. Well, what do I do? How do I, how do I stand? Well, first off, in Isaiah 54, it says, No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment will be contend, condemned, and this is the Amplified. This peace and righteousness and security and triumph, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me. Okay, that is Old Testament. So how do I run it through the New Testament? This is now the heritage of the children of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's that right. no weapon formed against me shall prosper. prosper. But if I don't know I'm a child of God, right. or I still think I'm trying to get in, mm. I'm not going to tap into it, am no. I? No. Okay, we're coming into it for a landing. Now here, here I didn't know about this. I didn't see it. I don't know why I didn't see it. Psalm 91, who wrote it? Moses. Moses did. Not David. Not David. <clears throat> Not Solomon. Solomon. Not David's son. Moses did. He wrote this when they built the tabernacle after leaving Egypt. Yes. Now look at what Psalm 91 says. And Psalm 91 is a, is a protection against Egypt and the plague. So this is what we stand on. Yes. When you abide in the shadow of the Most High, you are hidden. How do I do that? How, how do I do that New Testament principle? 
I am a child of God. I am in Him. I am righteous. Amen. I am now hidden in Him. Yes. Amen. Hidden in the strength of the Most High. He's the hope. What's my hope in? My good works? My tithing? Keeping the law? No, that I am in Christ. The hope that holds me up, the stronghold to shelter me. The only God for me, my great confidence. When I know who I am in Christ, I have great confidence when the enemy comes against me and I get that report. Amen. This is what the doctor said. This is what the bank says. This is what your job said. Come on now. We're downsizing, Larry. We're letting you go. What? Okay, Lord, you must have something better That's for right. me. Amen. That's That's right. Right. Come on. But if I don't have that, I go into total fear mm. and lockdown. Verse 3, he will rescue you yes. from every trap of the enemy. Mm. He will protect you from false accusation yes. mm. and any deadly curse. Yes. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and high. That's your robe of righteousness. Amen. His arm of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. How do I activate these things? I trust you, Lord. I don't understand it all, but I trust you. I don't know why this happened, but I'm trusting you to take care of it. I'm trusting you to get me through. I'm trusting you to overcome this. And that's where you have to stay. The minute you go into worry and fear and run around like a chicken with your head cut off, you are outside. You're no longer hiding in the shadow of the Most High. You're out running around with, where the demons are at. And they're going to get you and beat you up. Verse 5. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night or have fear of a spirit of darkness coming against you. What is he talking about? He's talking about the plagues that came on Egypt. The angel of death. He's talking about the spirit. He says, you have no fear of those things. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I saw something in my room and I was scared. Why? <laughs> when you don't know who you are, you're afraid. When I came, the, the day that I told the Lord I'd give up doing it my way, I went home that night and I was scared to death. Because there was a shadow in my room that was darker than dark and bigger than big. And I know it wanted to kill me. And I am a grown man hiding under my blanket. I did not want to open my eyes. I got up and went to my mom and dad's house. I would rather sleep on their front room floor than in that room because of that entity. And my dad says, that was the devil who was upset that you escaped. Do not fear him. Tell him to get out. So I went back to my house. I told them to all get out. And then I went to the apartment. I tried to get all the drug paraphernalia out. When you know your identity, you can stand up to the enemy. Amen. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Don't fear a thing. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you. Know where the powers of the enemy be launched against you. Even in a time of disaster, with that, this is where the King James says, a thousand may fall at your left and ten thousand at your right. The Passion translates, even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscratched and unharmed. That is about the people who have taken the jab. We are going to see death. It's going to happen. It's going to be horrifying. But anybody who comes and said, I want to be healed or set free, boom, we have authority to do it. But those who are stubborn, those who say, I've got it, those who are self-made men and women, they will not make it. I, and it's like, it's like, it's like, Every day I get up and I look at some news story. They said, yeah, this person died, 42 years old, healthy, tennis star. Athlete. This part, this guy fell down and died on the football field. This person fight and fell down on the basketball court. Mm. Mm -mm. This is a teenage girl in high school, cheerleader. She fell over and died of a heart attack. Come on. Mm -mm. Come on. Sometimes we have to do a little research to understand what's going on. 
During the middle of the pandemic, I looked at a report that the CEO of the largest uh, funeral home company in America, mm -hmm. who owned mortuaries all over the United States, mm -hmm. said the number of services that we were doing raised 20%. Mm -hmm. On any given year, they used to go up 1% or 2%. That was the fluctuation. Mm -hmm. But during the pandemic, they went up 20%. Mm -hmm. After the pandemic was over and everybody was supposed to get vaccinated, guess what? The Higher. next year, Higher. it was still 20%. Mm. So now what were they dying from? Higher. They weren't dying from the coronavirus, they were dying from the, the, the jab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or by the medicine they were given. Mm -hmm. Hey, this stuff here, we put you on a ventilator and everybody dies who goes on the ventilator, but we want to do it to your grandmother or your grandpa. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're dying. And by the way, the hospital gets $35,000 if you can say they died of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so guess what? Everybody in those wings died of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Heart attacks, strokes, everything else went to zero for a year. Mm -hmm. It was only coronavirus. Yeah, but money wasn't involved. The government wouldn't do that. No, the government would never do that to us. Mm. <clears throat> Our government, back in the day... Release smallpox on soldiers yeah. who are African American. Mm -hmm. right. When they tested the atomic bomb, they took soldiers and said, Hey, stand out here about a mile away, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all died of radiation poisoning yeah. within years. Yeah. So, your government, even though I love the United States, men can do and women can do horrific, horrific things. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple more. Amen. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment. Who? The wicked. Are you wicked? No. no. No, you're redeemed. Amen. For they will be paid back for what they have done. Mm. When we live our lives within the shadow of the Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. Amen. Now then, how then could evil prevail against us or diseases infect us? Right. God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending yes. you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, there they will be there for you and keep you from stumbling. Woo! That is for the people who are acknowledging yes. who they are. Yes. If you're still trying to be righteous, you are not tapping into that. Mm. <laughs> if you go, Lord, look at what I have done. Mm. Have you ever prayed that? Hmm. Lord, I was really good. I confessed all my sins and I, I gave a really big offering today. Hmm. The Lord says that becomes a debt. Hmm. That's self-righteous. Hmm. Yeah. Be led by the Spirit in all that you do. Hmm. Amen. I gave money to a big church for several years. That when I came to the back door, the pastor and his wife, 17,000 people said, oh, oh, Larry. Oh, Larry, yeah. You're one of the biggest givers in the church. <laughs> it was so bad that they did a video of our business. About how we were big givers and our business was doing so good. You know what happened the next year? We lost our house. Uh, Larry, you and Heather can't be on the prayer team because you lost your house. What? Ooh, really? Yeah, you must you must have done something wrong because God took your house away. And so we said thank you. You know, within 24 months, every pastor on staff lost their house. <laughs> and there was 25 or 24 of them. Mm, wow. mm. You can be going someplace that looks good, smells good, and, uh, and jumps around and does everything right. And they ain't doing anything right. I bragged on me and my giving instead of bragging on God and what God did. I had to have a whole re-education after that because I went down into a dark place. I thought I had sinned. I had messed up. God was punishing me. There was all kinds of nonsense coming against me. Almost done, kids. You will, <laughs> you will even walk unharmed among the fierce powers of darkness. Trampling every one of them beneath your feet. Yes. Yes. For here's what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you loved me. Now listen to this. I'm going to 
send this through the cross so you don't get this wrong. Because you loved me, delighted me, and have been loyal to my name, I will greatly protect you. Now, this is Old Testament Moses. How do I take that through the cross? Jesus was faithful. Jesus did only what the Father said to do. Jesus walked by the Spirit. Where do I live? Jesus Christ. The one who did everything right. So now I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying, yeah, I'm already in because of Jesus. He did that. He was faithful. Is your head wrapped around that? Does that mean you just go nilly-willy? No. But there's a robe of righteousness that covers you as you're walking and trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Amen. He is faithful. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Almost there, kids. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Verse 15, I will answer your cry for help. Now, we don't cry for help anymore. We declare. Mm-hmm. Every time you pray, you will feel my presence in your time of trouble. Hallelujah. Well, no, I'm not going to feel his presence only when I pray. I'm going to feel his presence 24 hours a day because I acknowledge that he's in me. Do you know I had no idea I was going to say everything that I said before I started my scriptures? Why? Because I stand up here and I make a declaration when I'm back there. Lord, whatever you want me to say, speak through me. If you want me to change the whole service, whatever you're going to do. Last night the Lord says, get your shofar because you're going to declare over that jab. Amen. Okay. I will answer you because you are my son. Yes. And every declaration you make, I will back it up. (laughs) I will deliver you and bring you honor. I will satisfy you with a full life. Yes. And with all that I do, for you. for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to do a shift in our thinking. Praise we God. have to get away from I'm good, I'm bad, I'm guilty, I feel shame. Mm-hmm. We have to get away from listening to the lies of the enemy. We have to start declaring what God says over us. Stop waiting for your healing. Declare it now. It's mine. Right now. Oh Lord, when you feel, when you got time on your hands, if, if it's in your will, you might as well just go die. That is crud talk. That is, that is the most ungodly prayer I've ever heard in my life. Jesus came into town and healed Everyone who came to him got healed. You go to the Father and you declare healing over yourself and you think God goes, well, you know, I'm kind of pressed for time today. Maybe tomorrow. (laughs) See, the problem is not God moving. The problem is us receiving. Mm. Oh, Larry, that makes me feel bad. No, change. (laughs) I I was listening to somebody... And they were actually talking to heaven. They said, oh yeah, I go to this such and such church. And they named the pastor. And I went, oh snap. <laughs> I know him. We were at a conference 10 years ago. And he stood up and talked about sin. Sin, 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 sin. Mm. Lord had me get up and take the mic away. But here was the word that was given. They're talking sin, 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 sin. And the Lord had me get up and literally walk up on stage and take the mic away and say, the church doesn't have a sin problem, it has a receiving problem. Mm -hmm. See, you guys have listened to the enemy and you've disqualified yourself from receiving all that he has. Embrace the receiving so you can receive it. Maybe you need to have a revelation of what the gospel says. Maybe you have to get delivered from some monkeys. Maybe you've got generational curses on you that you need to be set free from. Do whatever you need to do so that you can walk in the fullness of who God says you are. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray over you, and then I'm going to open it up for anybody who needs deliverance or healing or filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're not praying in tongues, we can take care of that. Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you that 
Your word was spoken and not mine. I pray right now that you would touch the hearts and minds that they would receive everything that you have for them. They would understand what I released. That you released through me. <laughs> All those watching online, I just pray that they get it, they understand it, they embrace it. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I thank you for a fresh anointing yes. now to set people free. Yes. To speak yes. over them, to deliver them from all the lies of the enemy. Yes. We thank you, Lord, today for your goodness and your grace. And the church said, Amen. 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 Uh, before I open up to healing, if you want to sow today, there's envelopes. The basket is up here at the end of service. You can just sow. <clears throat> but anybody need healing right now? Come on. If I could have somebody chat. Yes, ma'am. So, the past week, my wrist hurts if I bend it like this. Then, if I bend it like this. And also, yesterday, my wrist was going to be. Okay, we'll stop bending your wrist. Your wrist hurts? Am I going to ask God to do anything? What do I do? I speak over it. If you're here last week, Jesus said, you heal them. When Jesus sent out the 72, he said, you do it. None of them prayed for God to touch anybody. In the name of Jesus, I just release healing into your wrist, all the tendons, all the muscles, all the joints, so they would be totally restored. I speak over your throat and your lungs that no weapon form that gets you so prosper, and I just speak healing into them. I curse all the lies of the enemy and any demonic forces coming against you. I renounce them and command them to come off of you now in Jesus' name. And you say, Amen. Now don't tell anybody about this hurt anymore. Because you're healed. Now it might manifest in the next 10 minutes. It might manifest in the next 12 hours. But you just say, I am healed. Okay? All right. Anybody else for healing? <sighs> Anybody need to be delivered of anything? Anybody want to renounce anything? Hi, cutie pie. How can I help you? In the house? In her room? She was in Mary my house. room, but apparently... Have you been seeing them in your room, too? So I knew she was in my room and, like, crawled under the bed and then... Uh, they crawled under the covers. Yeah, one did. One did. The other one does was, like, helping me apologize for that. Okay. I want you to repeat after me. You understand that? I renounce... All witchcraft. Anything that I have said. Anything that's been spoken over me. That is evil. I renounce all fear. And I declare that I am a child of the Most High. I detach my little sister from all those things and I just declare that she is free from all the lies of the enemy any demonic entities that have attached themselves to her or are coming against her I curse them and I command them at the count of three to leave and I send them to the dry uninhabited places one, two, three out in the name of Jesus all lying spirits that are coming against her and trying to scare her I command them to leave now in Jesus name Amen. 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 You're a cutie pie. <laughs> We're good? Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Come on. How you doing, sir? Hello. Larry. Richard, how you doing, Richard? Just 
stand over here. The possibility of an evil spirit that I definitely want rid of. If you go read the Gospels, if you go read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus went into every town. This is how they worded it. He cast off demons and he healed the sick. Where did we get the theology that Christians don't have anything to do with demons anymore? It, yeah. It's silliness. If, if the main thing that he did was he yeah. cast off demons and he healed the sick, yeah. Yeah. then why are we not doing that? So it has nothing to do with you, you being bad. We, we do things, we open up doors, things happen as kids. A lot of trials come in when there's traumatic things that happen to us as kids. There's a violation, there's an abandonment, absent parent, violation, physically, emotionally, whatever. And then there's generational curses. When you find out, you know, somebody says, well, you know, so-and-so committed suicide. And we go, oh my gosh. And then we find out an uncle did it, and a grandpa did it, and it was like, so... It's not the individual, that's a lying spirit that comes on, or when you see sickness in families, or you see divorce in families, or you see poverty in families, and you'll see it goes from generation to generation, that is a demonic entity. So when we when we cast things off, there's a renouncing by you, because you have authority, and so I'll ask you to repeat some things, and then I'm going to command all those things that you renounce to come off of you. Okay? Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to add some things that I see. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So the first thing I want to renounce is I want you to say, I renounce. I renounce. Abandonment. Abandonment. Orphan spirit. Orphan spirit. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. It's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. Anything that says I'm not worthy. Anything that says I'm not worthy. Every spirit that says I should leave the earth. Every spirit that says I should leave the earth. All generational curses. All generational curses. Spirit of poverty. Spirit of poverty. Spirit of hopelessness. Spirit of hopelessness. I renounce all of them in Jesus' name. I renounce all of them in Jesus' name. Richard, at the count of three, I'm going to command all those things to come off of you. They manifest in certain ways. Mm -hmm. They could be tears. Yeah. They could be coughing. Mm -hmm. They could be stomach ache. They could be a shaking of the hand. And that's entities leaving you because they live in the soulish realm in your flesh because your spirit man. Are you born again? Okay. Did you ever put faith in Christ? Yes, I certainly have. Okay, so you put faith in Christ. That means your spirit man is perfect. They can't attach that to, to you. But your flesh and your soul, what you believe, is still carnal. And they come in and they attach themselves to that. Okay, and what did your dad fight with? Depression? A lot of issues. Okay. He's so silent. He has called and called called back. I mean, okay. He has uh, Christian science. He has a song. Ooh, um, okay. Okay, well, that, those mas the Masonic Lodge and all that stuff is witchcraft. It'll come back. Yeah. So I, I want you to do this. I renounce. I renounce. Masonic Lodge. Masonic Lodge. Anything to do with witchcraft of any kind? Anything to do with witchcraft? Anything to do with witchcraft. Addictions, Addictions. Alcoholism. alcoholism, any perversions, perversions. The count of three, I detach my brother from all those things and I command every spirit that has attached itself to him to come out of him. One, two, three, out. Every one of you spirits come out of him right now. Everyone. Come out. You have no place. You've been renounced. You've been called out. You have no more authority over him right now. Come out of him right now. If you feel the desire to clench your jaw, just open your mouth a little bit. Because sometimes they'll come out with that. Okay? You hear anything? So, Father, we just released the fire into my friend Richard to burn out all the lies of the enemy. Everything in his soul, everything in his mind, every stronghold of the enemy, we just release the fire to burn it out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Are you feeling anything? Okay. Any discomfort anywhere? Not especially. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do something uncomfortable. I want you to raise your hands like this and just say, Lord, I receive it. 
I receive all you have for me. And I let go of every one of those lying spirits. Out. In the name of Jesus. I declare that my brother has the mind of Christ. And he is free of every lying spirit in Jesus' mighty name. He is free. all anger okay we renounce anger okay so we renounce anger and rage which is always tied to it wasn't fair so I renounce all those things and every single spirit attached to that I command them to come out of Richard right now to count of three one two three out out out. Now sometimes this manifests immediately. Sometimes you go get in your car and you're kind of out of the spotlight and it just comes out and you go home and you sit in your chair and it just starts coming. So you just let it. Whenever it happens, because the word has been spoken, I don't need to you don't need to go get deliverance 800 more times unless it's for a particular thing. But the things that I have spoken over you, that word is there. And you, you're going to add your faith and you're going to receive it. When that happens, they will manifest and leave. Okay? There's a reason why you're here. Because God's not done with you. And there's good stuff ahead of you. Nobody leave God. God did not plan any of us to leave this earth broken or defeated. Amen. He wanted all of us to leave glorious, fulfilled, and accomplishing what He wants us to do. So your time is not up, my friend. Okay. okay. And you just what do you hear? This is my partner in crime over here. What do you hear? Huh? You're good. Okay. So you you have a way to contact us, yes. Messenger, or whatever, or yes. Facebook, or whatever you send us, an email, email to Grace Church. Whatever you let me know, okay. if you need prayer, I'll I'll call you or whatever. We're twenty four seven, okay? okay. Right. Is there a stick for a little while? Absolutely, okay. we'll do that. All right, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Took so, takes a lot of faith to come up here and, and do this. Anybody else? Yes, mighty man of God. <laughs> What can I do for you? What? Healing? Healing in your body? In your nugget? In your coconut? Okay. Is it tummy or legs or just sinuses? Head? Cold. Cold and sniffles. Okay. We just speak to the sinuses and everything. Respiratory system to open up right now in the name of Jesus. We just release healing into his head, into his body. We curse every lie of the enemy. Every spirit of inflammation that's coming upon him, we command it to come off of him right now in Jesus' name. Amen? Yes, Dad. Yes, sir. Um, I, um, my grandmother's family, they always have a, you know, high blood pressure. And Okay. This is what happens with us. We speak over you. God says, I've sent the healing. We walk out the door. Oh man, I don't know about that blood pressure. And that, that enemy comes right back on. I sometimes have seen people come up for the same thing multiple times. So your job is, I will command it to leave and I'll speak healing. But then you, from this moment forward, is, I feel clear. I don't have high blood pressure. They've been trying to, they, they tried to put me on medicine forever. And it just made everything go wacky. Finally, Dr. Heather, we both agreed on it. We cut out all my medicine for the blood pressure. Four different pills that were trying to kill me. Then I went to feed juice extract and then even that, the Lord says, you don't need that either. So I stopped taking that. Okay. And once a month, I'll take my blood pressure. It'll be 120, 130, over 80, 85, or 90, or whatever. 
And if I sit down for 15 minutes and don't move and I take it again, it goes down to 118 or whatever. Perfect. It's perfect. But it's what you believe and what comes out of your mouth. Okay. Father, I just release healing into my brother. I command all his arteries to open up, all his valves to open up. I command his heart to work perfectly. And he does not have high blood pressure. Any spirit tied to this, any inflammation tied to this, we renounce it and we command every spirit causing harm in his body to leave him right now in the name of Jesus. Out! Hallelujah! Glory! Jesus. Glory! Out! Out! Glory! Out! Out! You have no place, you have no authority. Come out of him right now. He is free. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Richard, I had a friend come up, and she had never been in a church like this, never seen ministry like this, and she renounced some things, and I prayed over her, and she just looked at me. And I'm going, oh, man, church is all looking at nothing's happening, right? This. She went home, and not that night, wow. but the next day, she's laying in bed going, why didn't anything happen? Thank you, Jesus. And she just heard, because you didn't receive it. And so she said, I want it. And she went into a coffee spitting fit for 35, 40 minutes, came back the next day, and said, oh my gosh. And so sometimes we have to want it. Sometimes we're embarrassed. Sometimes we don't know what to do. It's foreign. But it's there, so that's why I keep thinking. You're going to get in your private time, and you're going to say, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm done with all this nonsense. Hallelujah. And you're going to start Hallelujah. manifesting some time. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory! Thank you, you know what I like about Alvin? Alvin's like a sponge. I, I really say anything like him, and he just sucks it up like a little vacuum cleaner. I love people like this. Yes, sir. You know I'm... I receive everything that he received. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Because I was dealing with my blood pressure, right? I was trying to like receive my medicine, kind of find out that doctor left. So I got to do it all over again. So I received everything that it was spoken to him. <laughs> so, so that what touched me. <laughs> Okay, but the main thing when I woke up this morning, I said, "Lord, I need to receive the fire of God." Mm -hmm. Come on. See, because I know the fire of God burns up things. Yes, it does. And a lot of times we have a lot of issues, a lot of problems. A lot of times we don't want to express to other people because they really don't understand. <clears throat> right. But God understands. Amen. And I know that I need the fire of God. I need, I need even more Amen. to over, to overtake me as like as David says, God ready? strengthen me as an ox yes, right. that I need to see. That's Are you right. ready? Amen. Yeah. Woo. Father, I just released the fire of God in Dalvin right now, and I just Ooh. command that fire to burn out everything that is not of you, Jesus. Lord. It's that is from the enemy that he receives his healing in his body, in his heart, in his arteries. In his mind, that there's peace on his mind. Hallelujah. That the enemy has no place and no authority over him or a net. There's healing. Yes. The lies of the enemy, I curse. They have no place. And I command them to leave right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. The Lord Thank says, you. I've just begun. Thank you, Lord. You haven't seen anything yet. Hallelujah. What you've been experiencing, what you've seen, even though it's manifested and it's kind of blowing your way, the Lord says, this is, this is kindergarten. I'm about ready to release some things into you and your family that is going to just blow your mind. There's going to be freedom. There's going to be freedom in you. There's going to be freedom in your family, children, relatives, sisters, uncles, aunts. This means you're just going to be like a, the furnace that God's going to pour into and you're just going to everybody around you. So be ready. 
And he's going to start asking you to do things. Say things. Speak things. Pray for somebody. Speak over somebody. So just be ready. Hallelujah. I have cleansed you from all unrighteousness. Period. You cannot be any more right. You cannot lose any of your righteousness. The Lord says, if you embrace what I've already done, it will manifest in the natural realm, and there will be prosperity, there will be freedom, there will be restoration, there will be peace on you, but you have to stop listening to the lies of the enemy that are condemning you about anything. Amen. You are free. Amen. Hallelujah. I have nothing. The first time I saw these things, I said, Oh, dang. Woo! Freak me out. Lord says, You're going to get used to it. Because I'm going to start touching your family, I'm going to start touching your life. All you have to do is receive. There's no more qualifications unless you need to be born again. You're okay. It's good. It's all good. The Lord says, I don't want you to serve me. I want you to know me. Is your wife? If you were sorry, you went, woo, woo. Right? Okay. But you didn't know her yet, did you? But later on, you did know her. And then, if there was a relationship, if there was marriage, then like, ooh, I really know her. Okay? So you don't know God yet. You got some images. You got some, you've, you've heard some things. The Lord says, I want you to know me. Because I want to manifest myself in your life. So when you come, I will talk to you at night. When you're alone in the car, I will speak to you. And my voice will be the low, quiet one that always says good things about you. I will not be condemning. I will not be harsh. I will not be legalistic. I will not say anything negative about you. Amen? Hi, boo-boo. Can you give me a high five? Can you give me a low five? Can you give me a shoe five? All right. So we covered all the fives, right? Father, I just pray over this little guy that he would know you at a very young age. I curse all the lies of the enemy. I curse every generational curse. I curse every plan of the enemy to come on him, anything that the enemy plans, that he would walk in the fullness of the plan that you have for him and that he is surrounded with the favor of grace. We release his angels to push back darkness that's trying to come in him or on him or in his family. And we declare that he will fulfill everything that God has called him to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hmm? You used up all your tokens. Come on, sister. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I just told that I'm yelling. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. That's not how I feel. But like everybody tells me that I'm yelling.
I'm constantly getting like I'm not perfect. But they use church against me. Like you go to church, so they expect me to be like this perfect person, and I'm I'm not perfect. Maybe offense because the other day I just took off and I didn't know where I was going. I got offended that they were both attacking me. made you to be an overcomer. I've made you to knock down doors. I've made you to tear down strongholds. I've made you to set the captives free. I've made you as a warrior. Yes. You're not a you're not a, a tom tom drum for the enemy to beat. You're a sword of light to cut the enemy and destroy the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. I just really stand waiting in her to tear down every single stronghold in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You go take a shower and you go outside and you roll in the dirt. What did you just do? You got dirty now. Now, what did Jesus say about what he made clean? And the story is in the upper room when Jesus washed their feet. He was washing their feet. What did your feet represent? You walking through this world, right? And Peter said, Well, I don't wash my feet, wash all of me. And Jesus said, what I make clean, and he used the word for spiritually clean, is clean. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is wash, and he used the word for washing clothes, yeah. the word, and wash your feet. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, you need to remind yourself of that I have cleansed you. You need to speak over you what I speak over you. You need to stop regurgitating the enemy. You don't need to prove anything. I said you are perfect and righteous. Be perfect and righteous. You can't get any better. You can just get the line on the top. Anybody else? What? Say it. Don't be a chicken. I'll come back there. The Lord will tattle on you. Okay, have it your way. <laughs> That's <not good. clears throat> the world says things about you that are not true. <clears throat> People in the natural realm speak things about you, over you, behind your back. The Lord said, I made you perfect. You are exactly the way I want you to be. He says, I love you. I have a plan for your life. It's amazing. 
He said, stop listening to the lies of the enemy. And he says, you need to get a Bible. Don't get King James. Don't get New King James. Don't get NIV. Get New American Standard if you can get a Passion Translation. And you need to start reading and finding about what God says about his righteous children. I mean, you need to read Galatians. You need to read Ephesians. You need to understand this stuff. Because I can get up. You're old enough now that you can start feeding on the Word. Okay? Because I want you to understand what I say about you, says the Lord. There's a brightness all over you. But the enemy has said you told you you're in darkness. Kind of dreary, humdrum. This is it. This is as good as it's going to get. And the Lord says, oh, no. I got great things for you. I got me. How old are you? Twelve. Oh my gosh, you're a baby. God says you haven't you can't even comprehend what I have for you. It's like goodness on steroids. It's like go look at good and then multiply it eight hundred times. But he says he wants you just like cops. He wants you to know him, and you're not going to know him unless you start reading. So, Passion Translation. Get them through Amazon. Pretty expensive. That. That will cover the Gospels, all the New Testament, Psalms, I think Isaiah. No, no, no. Revelation. Revelation's in there now. But you read the four Gospels, but if you read Paul's letters, Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, and then when you have questions, you come see me or Pastor Heather and ask us. Okay? How many of you come on Fridays? How many of you are blessed on Fridays? Amen. Do you know when you sit under that anointing that that anointing can rub off on you? Amen. And you can start walking in that same anointing? Amen. But it's all based on what? Amen. Understanding your identity and believing it. Amen? Amen. Hi, princess. Who whacked you in the nose? Saucy? Did Sassy do it? Where's Sassy hiding at? Did you get in a, Did you get an argument with your sis? She scratched herself. Had her yelped at it a few times, but she asked her why, and she just said she just does it, but she scratches herself. Oh, come here. And I told her. Can you stand up on the chair? Can you stand? Are you okay? What was that spirit called? Pork yelling. Say, I want you to say it. Say, I renounce. I renounce. All scratching. All scratching. And itching. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit that is causing you to scratch and itch yourself to leave you now at the count of three. One, two, three. Out! And that she will not do this anymore because she's been free. She's been free of every single generational curse. We curse those generational curses and any demons that are tied to it. We command them to leave in the name of Jesus. And I want you to say, get out. You're not well. Go away. In Jesus' name. Amen! Jesus said, come to me with faith like an old salty dog. Mm. He said, come to me with the faith of a child. Did I tell her to come up? Did she come up? Did she jump up on the chair? Did she do what I asked her to do? Do what I asked her to do. She just believed. That's the faith we If Jesus says, go outside, lift one leg up, and cough three times, and you'll be set free, what should you do? You better get outside and lift that leg. <laughs> see, whatever he asks you to do, it's not, he doesn't want to see your obedience. He wants to see, he wants to see, he wants to see your faith. Will you trust me? Will you trust me? So any place that you have a struggle with, God will challenge you in that area. I've been in churches, the Lord says, what's in your wallet? 
Okay, who wants to know? <laughs> he says, go ahead and give everything. Lord, there's like 400 bucks there, man. He goes, do you trust me? And that's been an area that I've had a stronghold on. Now, if he says empty the bank account, I'll do it. I don't care. Because he's shown himself faithful so many times. I don't do it to get. I do it because I already have. Yes. You understand that? Pentecost was a celebration of first fruit. That wasn't seed. That was fruit. Jesus was sowed into the ground by the Father. And the first fruit was the Holy Spirit fell on 120 people in the upper room. I do this not because I'm going to sow a dollar and get ten back. That is monkey business. That is witchcraft. I do this because I'm already blessed. And I'm acknowledging, God, you are my source for everything. Now, will God challenge you sometime in your life? Absolutely. But don't do it because you say, oh, I'm going to get, I'm gonna, oh, we're going to sow everything in the bank account so we can have $10,000 next week. You're foolish. Don't do it. Don't give away the rent money. We'll pay the rent. But what God tells you to do, whatever that is. So I do this because I'm thanking Him for what He's already done. Amen? Amen. Father, I bless the saints. I speak Your favor and grace over them. Everybody that I prayed over and made declarations, I declare that those demonic forces will manifest and leave before the day is over. We speak freedom. We speak revelation. We speak new understanding. And new levels of walking in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Guys, have a great week. Knowing that you are blessed, you are loved, and you are perfect. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.